Basically, you need good vision for every aspect of flying. You don't just need good vision, you need excellent vision. The better the pilot, generally, the better the vision. Hello, my name is Steve Schallhorn. I'd like to talk to you about LASIK and the Naval Aviator. As a former F-14 pilot, I gained a very good appreciation for the visual requirements of the Navy pilot, things like landing on an aircraft carrier. I later took that experience with me as a director of refractive surgery for the U.S. Navy. I always knew that if the visual requirements were good enough for the Naval Aviator, they ought to be good enough for the rest of us. And that's what I took with me in all the studies that I've looked at regarding refractive surgery. Regardless of whether you're talking about epi-LASIK or standard PRK or any other form of surface ablation, the visual recovery is very slow. Now we know that LASIK offers much faster visual recovery and that's a key consideration for everyone but especially for the Navy pilot. Here's an example. The qualification to land on an aircraft carrier at night lasts for one week and then that aviator is out of qualification. So if we can speed up the visual recovery and lessen the time that the aviator is down, we not only take and save the cost of training that individual, but we can also return them back to the cockpit much, much faster. So we were very interested in looking at LASIK and aviators. We started by looking at wavefront guided technology and we, we looked at aberrations that were induced by conventional LASIK and there can be many aberrations induced by it. We also looked at techniques, technology primarily focused on advanced custom view with a VizX platform. So we looked at a variety of different things. We looked at how predictable it was. How predictable was this advanced custom view, wavefront guided treatment, compared to a conventional treatment? And when I compared it to conventional treatment, it was the best of conventional treatment. Large optical zone diameters, very, very refined nomograms. We looked at how predictable it was for refraction. And we found right out of the box, in a sample size of over a thousand eyes, we found that wavefront guided was more predictable. We also looked at uncorrected visual acuity in that same sample size, again, over a thousand eyes. And we found that even though both procedures targeted emetropia well, they hit zero, because of the, the distribution of the refractive outcome was tighter with the wavefront guided, the uncorrected visual acuity was better for the advanced custom view. In fact, in this study, 88% of eyes achieved 2016 uncorrected visual acuity. We also looked at several safety aspects. Change in best corrective visual acuity is probably the most significant one. And probably most significantly is contrast sensitivity, other measures of quality of vision. We looked at contrast sensitivity a variety of different ways. And with conventional LASIK, we found on average a loss. With wavefront guided, we did not see that loss. We actually found a slight gain or improvement in contrast sensitivity, a very measurable significance between those two. And that has many spin-offs also clinically. These patients are going to be less prone to having night vision problems, which is one of the real problems with conventional LASIK. We also took a look at the keratome. Now the microkeratome I think over the last several years has been really the neglected aspect of LASIK. We had great wavefront guided technology, advanced custom view, iris registration. A lot of effort went into the ablation profile as I've talked about. But a real neglected aspect is the creation of the flap. My colleague and I, Dave Tanzer, did a study where we looked at the best microkeratome to be used for naval aviators. In this study, we looked at three keratomes the intralase. We also took a look at two mechanical keratomes, the Amadeus and the Hansatome, the two most common mechanical keratomes. In a nutshell, what we found is that the femtosecond laser with the intralase had faster visual recovery. Patients had achieved 2016 uncorrected visual acuity at a greater percentage one day after surgery 
and one week after surgery, and one month after surgery, compared to the two mechanical keratomes. In fact, one day after surgery, fully 72% of these patients with the intralase achieved 2016 uncorrected visual acuity. That's one day post-op. Approximately 90% achieved 2020 one day post-op. While the mechanical keratomes weren't bad, it was just significantly worse than the intralase. We did a very careful paired analysis. And we found throughout the follow-up time period in this study, which was three months, that the intralase had improved quality of vision or contrast sensitivity, and significantly so. Specifically, there was much less chance of having a loss of contrast with the intralase than the mechanical keratomes by a factor of almost three to one. So the combination of faster visual recovery and better quality of vision to us said, this is a better way to make the flap. I think the safety profile of the intralase is much greater than a mechanical keratome. Issues like incomplete flap or buttonhole flaps are much less likely to occur with the intralase than they are with a mechanical keratome. And they can be easier to manage also. So I think the safety profile also lends itself to that. So we looked at this night driving simulation. Conventional LASIK, we found on average a loss, and significantly so. That was one of the Achilles heels of conventional LASIK. We then compared it to this advanced form of LASIK, making the flap with the intralase, doing the treatment with advanced custom view. In a careful matched analysis, we found that advanced custom view, really for the first time in a refractive procedure, had on average an improvement in night driving in our night driving simulator. That was very significant. Instead of a loss, we found a gain. Therein lies the strength of this combined technology. And by combined technology, femtosecond to make the flap, a wavefront guided treatment to do the ablation profile with. And in the case of our studies, that was intralase to make the flap and advanced custom view to do the treatment. It really is a different procedure. And it's important to appreciate that. It behaves different. The quality of vision is so much better. The safety profile is improved. It's not like the procedure we were conducting eight or 10 years ago. And I think that's important to appreciate. And I also think it's very important for the public to appreciate that also. Because their perception of LASIK is the kind of LASIK surgery that we were doing years ago. And this is truly different. Now with that in mind, after these studies where we looked at What's the best way to make the flap? What's the best way to correct the refractive error? With this combined technology, we treated the first aviator. I did so uh, December of 06. He was a marine weapon system operator. Gave him a intralase flap, advanced custom view treatment. Within a couple hours after the surgery, he was 2020 uncorrected. The next day he was 2016, very happy. And he was back flying F-18s again one month after surgery and doing very well. In conclusion, based on our research, NASA has recently approved this LASIK for use in astronauts. Intralase and advanced custom view truly represents the best of the best of LASIK.